Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about Elon's next big disruption. A little company he started in 2002 called SpaceX. In 2001, Elon Musk had an idea. He wanted to land a small greenhouse on Mars and regain the public's interest in space exploration. He flew to Russia and tried to buy some rockets from the Russian government, but they wouldn't sell him any at a price he could afford. So in 2002, with some of the money he had made from selling PayPal to eBay, Elon started his own rocket company called Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, SpaceX. By the way, before Elon started SpaceX, he knew next to nothing about rockets. Elon took a look at the rocket industry and realized they were wasting a lot of money. He decided to apply vertical integration and bring production of 85% of launch hardware in-house. He wanted to cut the cost to launch a rocket by a factor of 10 and still have a huge profit on every launch. As Elon has explained many times, if every time you took an airline flight, everyone had to jump out of the plane and parachute to the destination, and then the plane crashed? A plane ticket would cost well over a million dollars. It seems obvious, of course you have to reuse the airplane. For Elon to achieve inexpensive rocket flights, he'd have to reuse the first stage of the rocket. In 2008, just six years after starting, SpaceX was the first privately owned company to launch a liquid-fueled rocket into orbit. Think about that for a second. Six years after starting to make something he didn't even know that much about, Elon's fledgling company did something no private company had ever done before. And on December 22nd, 2015, SpaceX was the first to land an orbital rocket's first stage back on land. The Falcon 9 had just done the impossible. The rocket industry would never be the same again. It had just been disrupted. An industry full of huge global defense titans like Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which partnered into United Launch Alliance, or ULA. They had been building rockets for decades, and they just got schooled. SpaceX, this upstart company with just about 5,000 employees in 2015, went up against Lockheed Martin with 100,000 employees and Boeing, which had 161,000. Those big companies weren't even attempting to do what SpaceX did. Landing a rocket? That's impossible! And then five months after SpaceX accomplished the impossible, they went on to do something even more impossible. On April 8, 2016, they landed a rocket on a drone ship on the ocean. And it didn't stop there. SpaceX just kept making landmark achievements, doing things that had never been done before. The first privately funded liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit. The first privately developed liquid-fuel rocket to put a commercial satellite in orbit. The first private company to successfully launch, orbit, and recover a spacecraft. The first private company to send a spacecraft to the International Space Station. The first company to send a satellite into geosynchronous orbit. The first landing of an orbital rocket's first stage on land. The first landing of an orbital rocket's first stage on an ocean platform. The first relaunch and landing of a used orbital rocket stage. The first controlled flyback and recovery of a payload fairing. The first reflight of a commercial cargo spacecraft. The first private company to send a human-rated spacecraft to space. The first private company to autonomously dock a spacecraft to the International Space Station. Not to mention the successful launch of the Falcon Heavy in February of 2018 the world's most powerful rocket in operation that put a Tesla Roadster into space. As of today, SpaceX has had over 80 completed missions and has over 100 upcoming launches on its manifest, worth over $12 billion. Okay, so this is a nice story about the success of SpaceX, but you might be asking, what does this have to do with disruption? Yeah, surely the big boys like Boeing and Lockheed Martin are still launching plenty of rockets and making plenty of money. This little company, SpaceX, is so tiny compared to them. You even said it yourself. SpaceX is a fraction of their employees. And I mean, SpaceX is only valued at about $30 billion. Yeah, Lockheed Martin is valued at $109 billion, and Boeing is valued at $202 billion. Right, so where's the disruption? Well, SpaceX has claimed that they can launch a rocket for $90 million, whereas the same mission would cost ULA $225 to $445 million. 
That's because ULA uses the expendable Atlas V and Delta IV launch systems that have been in use for more than 50 years. Wait, they've been basically using the same rockets since the 60s? Yep. These are expendable rocket platforms, which means that the first stage of the rocket is never recovered. So ULA, along with Russia's Roscosmos Space Agency and the European Aryan Rocket Agency, all use expendable launch platforms? Yep, and for decades, they've pretty much been the only game in town. The US military, NASA, and private satellite companies had no choice but to use them and pay their price. So they have not been innovating as quickly as SpaceX. And here's a chart of rocket launches. Do you see a trend? See that blue that starts appearing in 2013? That's SpaceX. And in 2018, SpaceX had two thirds of the commercial launch market. The pace of innovation has been so poor in the launch industry that the only way to get astronauts up to the International Space Station ever since the space shuttle was retired in 2011 is this. This is the Russian Soyuz crew module from the 60s. It's the only way to get astronauts from any country into orbit. But as we speak, SpaceX is testing their Dragon crew module, which has already transported cargo safely to the ISS and soon will also carry astronauts. Boeing is also developing a crew module, but a seat aboard their Starliner capsule will cost $90 million versus SpaceX's $55 million aboard Crew Dragon. Every year, about 200 satellites are launched into orbit. Currently, the worldwide rocket propulsion market is valued at about $5 billion. As SpaceX is able to lower the price per kilogram to orbit, more companies can afford to launch, which expands the market, a market which SpaceX currently controls. That's called disruption. We hope you'll join us for our next episode on Elon the Disruptor. Thanks for watching. Now you know. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.